All right, everybody. Welcome to Old News with Flint Dibble, and I am Flint Dibble. This is our very first inaugural episode where I, an archaeologist, uh, go through archaeology news. And uh, I have some really good ones. We have a packed schedule right here. And uh, we're going to just sort of dive right in, I think. The idea with this is we're going to have a little bit of fun. Probably midway, I'll crack a beer. Um, we're going to talk about some of the top headlines. We're going to talk about some papers that are by colleagues that are not in the headlines. And uh, we're going to have some video footage. And I interviewed some people. It's going to be a good time. So our first story for today um, the idea here is that I will be sifting through archaeology news for you, and uh, I want to warn you that the first story has some human remains that will be shown. Um, and what this story is, we have huge news out of Egypt, the first genome ever sequenced, the first complete genome, I should say, ever sequenced from ancient Egypt, apparently reveals surprising ancestry that's what the scientists say they are absolutely surprised you know because that's that's yeah um well let's see are, are we surprised how cool is this personally i think it's really dang cool um are the results surprising man i hate headlines in our world why can't we just be honest with each other because they're really freaking cool just say that the results are cool you know, like, so what So what are we talking about? We're talking about a paper that was just published on the 2nd of July, so a few weeks ago, in uh, Nature. And it's the whole genome ancestry of an old kingdom Egyptian. And so this is our first old kingdom Egyptian from, it depends on when you choose the date range, but from not that long before the pyramids at Giza were built. So this individual lived from 2855 to 2570 BCE, calibrated with radiocarbon dates. And they're from uh, the cemetery Nuerat. It's an adult Egyptian male who lived a few centuries after Egyptian unification, bridging the early dynastic and old kingdom periods. The body was interred in a ceramic pot within a rock cut tomb. So let's dive in. We are talking about Egypt here, of course, and we're talking about near the tombs of Beni Hassan. And so this is a famous cemetery. This is a cemetery. Nui Rod is not this exact cemetery. This is a nearby cemetery that has Old Kingdom burials, but it's mostly famous for Middle Kingdom uh, and, and, and intermediate period burials, including some rock cut tombs that have some amazing art, uh, decoration, as we've seen, as well as a range of other uh, materials that are found here at Beni Hassan. So this is from the site of Nuerat, which is nearby. Um, I've dug up the article that actually was about the excavation of the cemetery. It's actually a pretty cool cemetery. It's got a mixture of elites and commoners buried in different ways. Um, there's a series of rock cut tombs, and then there's a series of uh, burials that are within ceramic vessels. And the ceramics have been well studied. I have for you here a beer jar. Keep that in mind a little later. We're going to be talking more about beer, of course, uh, throughout this entire episode, because who, who doesn't like beer? I mean, it's, it's, it's beer. I got my beer here, um, which I'm not ready to crack yet. We got to get through this a little bit, but uh, I'm ready. I'm looking at it. It's cold. It's frosty. It's raining outside, though. So uh, so what we're talking about here is there's this individual that was buried at the Nuerat Cemetery. And this is a big deal that, uh, that uh, archaeological scientists were able to get a whole genome. The individual here was studied. Their bones were studied um, very clearly. And uh, this individual had a series. So this was the pot that the individual was buried in right over here, buried in this large ceramic vessel. And the studies of the vertebra and other kinds of uh, bones, the arrows here are pointing at sort of stress um, from osteoarthritis. And it actually seems reasonably likely that this individual was a potter. This individual made pottery um, on a wheel. This was around the time Potter's Wheel was introduced to Egypt from Mesopotamia. And so you can see that we have figurines from similar times of people making pottery on a wheel. And it's certainly possible that this individual was making pottery, in fact, reasonably likely, possibly on a wheel. 
who knows, maybe this individual or their family member even made the uh, ceramic vessel that ended up being their coffin. Um, so this is who we're looking at. Um, and this is very surprising. I think actually what's the most surprising thing is we finally, cheers, have a complete genome from this period of ancient Egypt. This is a big deal. DNA, I don't know if you know this at all, but it does not preserve well in hot environments. And well, Egypt is dang hot. Um, it also does not preserve very well in uh, humid environments. And many of the tombs that individuals were buried in in Egypt end up becoming very humid um, the way they're closed up. And so the, the burial practices of the ancient Egyptians are not very good for us to be able to get DNA. Um, that said, it, this, it looks promising that we'll be able to get more in the future. The archaeologists have speculated that this specific kind of burial in a pot vessel is actually good for finding DNA. So that doesn't help us for individuals in rock cut tombs, but it does help maybe in the future. I expect that we'll see more complete genomes from this period and this area. Um, so there are some interesting points here. The, the CNN and BBC tell us that history is being rewritten and that this is all surprising and all. What do the authors tell us? They say, although we caution that these results are based on a single Egyptian genome, they mirror another study that found evidence of gene flow from partial genomes in mitochondrial DNA from the Mesopotamian and Zagros regions into surrounding areas, including Anatolia, during the Neolithic. Together with archaeological evidence for cultural exchange, these findings open the possibility that wider cultural and demographic expansion originating in the Mesopotamian region reached both Egypt and Anatolia during this period. So, are we surprised? Has this rewritten history? Thoughts? Has this rewritten history? It seems like it matches the archaeological evidence we've already uncovered and studied for evidence of trade. It also matches partial genomes and mitochondrial DNA for migration at this exact same period and gene flow from Mesopotamia to Egypt. Because the interesting thing is, is that this individual was one-fifth, 20% of their DNA had markers of Mesopotamian origin, which is really friggin' cool. Like, really cool. People mingled. They moved around. Life was complicated. There's not some clear delineation between people in Egypt and people in Mesopotamia. And in fact, this individual shared 80% of their genome with other North African groups, including as far away as Morocco. So people were moving around. That's friggin' awesome. But is this surprising and doesn't rewrite history? The headlines get an F minus. The article gets an A plus. Um, so what's interesting here is they also looked at and compared this genome to the partial DNA sequences that we have from later in Egyptian, uh, uh periods like the third intermediate period and also modern day Egyptians. And, uh, what they found is that modern day Egyptians do very clearly derive from this individual who lived in Egypt over 4,500 years ago. So modern Egyptians the, from up to, what is it, uh, 32 to 74% of their DNA is very similar and derives from the population that this individual derived from. So we can all confirm that modern Egyptians are very clearly related to ancient Egyptians. That's really friggin' cool. Um, as well, um, this individual is closely related to uh, individuals in the past from Middle Neolithic Morocco. So 28.9 to 72.7% overlap from the Bronze Age Levant. So 11, so around the area of Israel and stuff like that, 11 to 57%. Um, and a 4,500 year old individual from Ethiopia. Oh, sorry. These are modern, present day Egyptian genomes derived from this individual from Nuweirot at this percentages, from this middle Neolithic individuals from Morocco, from Bronze Age Levant or Israel today, that area and from a 4,500-year-old individual from Ethiopia, and two approximately 230-year-old individuals from Congo. So modern-day Egyptians, what they show is a very complex history. 
they are all derived from people that are local and they're also derived from people that are from far away, which makes a lot of sense. People moved around. This individual, for example, is evidence of that 4,500 years ago. A fifth of their ancestry matched Mesopotamian ancestry, and they were closely related to people in Morocco, 80% of their genome. So at the same time, we need to be cautious. This is only one complete genome, so there's still a lot more work to do. A ton of work to do to be able to understand the, the genetic ancestry and diversity of Egypt from the furthest prehistory up until today. In fact, they note that approximately 20% of present modern Egyptian genomes included here did not even fit this model described above that I just described. So there's a lot of work to do. This is why this is just a quick bite because it's just one genome. We need to get more to be able to really put together the, the, the ancestral history of Egypt in different periods and different groups of people. But this potter, this potter who made pottery for us that we like to look at in museums, he helps answer this question. Okay, what is up next as we sift through some archaeology news? Are you tired of all the news? There's just so much going on in the news. Like, look at the size of this ancient Roman shoe. This is what we're here with for old news with Flint Dibble. We're going to look at this shoe that apparently perplexes archaeologists. Or does it? We're not perplexed at all, in fact. Beyond that, we're going to look at how shifts in the magnetic poles tens of thousands of years ago that ancient humans and Neanderthals adapted to. Or what about the Antikythera device? Is it a computer? had to rethink the history of technology completely as a result of this single object. We're going to look at the shipwreck that it's from, and finally, we're going to check out some of the most amazing boar feasts that ever happened 10,000 years ago in Southwest Asia. Stay tuned for the very first episode of Old News with Flint Dibble. And I'm Flint Dibble. See you soon.